Alright, cool. This is my bus, the Zalamir Decker. The driving department's a little bit junky. I kind of just throw my stuff over here, but I did I put this seat in myself. This is, I got this used um, from an RV salvage yard, so it's a little more comfortable. So, oh, so this is cool. So if I'm this can kind of I can kind of become part of the living room area if I have friends in here. I can turn this around, which is good. I have a little kind of a makeshift little shoe rack that I made here in the front. And then sometimes like if we're out and uh, it gets dirty, people can just throw their shoes there uh, before they come in and stuff. So driving a manual school bus was a pretty big pain in the ass at first learning how. I learned how to drive this bus when I bought it. <laughs> so the day I bought it is the day I learned how to drive a bus. But I had to get used to it. It definitely took some getting used to. I feel pretty comfortable at this point. I'm still getting used to, to city traffic and stuff like that. It still can be a bit, a bit hectic. Um, can create some anxiety. But yeah, I knew how to drive a manual already. Um, but obviously a bus is a little bit different. It goes a little. It goes slower. It, the pickup is really slow. But I do. I get up about 65 miles an hour. A little over. I can get up maybe like 70 from going downhill. Yeah. But it's whatever. I didn't get it to go fast. Um. So I put this book rack up. It's kind of. It's the same shelving structure I used for my cabinets. And then I have it connected. And then it's it's actually bolted. And I have little wooden ends here that are into the frame of the bus, so they're not going anywhere. Oh, this is just, I mean, this is wood I got at Home Depot. I mean, I guess it's like three quarters of an inch. I don't remember, I've purchased so many different types of wood in the building of this bus. I cannot tell you exactly. It's just been, it's been ridiculous. I've been to Home Depot probably 200 times to three different, four different Home Depots. Um, they started to know me really well. So I can't remember exactly which wood I bought, but it's, it's pretty sturdy. It's three quarter of an inch, something solid. That's secured to the ceiling. And then I got this Buddha head. I just love the, the Buddha decorations. I mean, it just gives me a, a peaceful feeling. So that holds my books in place. I have a lot of books on my Kindle. It is where I keep most of my books, but there's a few that I want to just have on hand. I just, it kind of gives me a peace of mind. It's nice, like people see, they see what kind of person I am. They see what I'm about. Uh, the Alchemist. I have a book, uh, Elon Musk, his autobiography, because he's, you know, he's an idol of mine. Just a couple different things. Uh, I have a little Spanish. I've been trying to, I've been telling myself I want to learn Spanish, so I have this here as a little reminder. Uh, I have a few maps up here. Next to the book rack, I have this hook here, and this is, it, there's a curtain that goes, that's just, it's just stapled on here. There's a hook next to the book rack, and I have a hook on this side too, and the curtains can just close for a little bit more privacy and it's a nice thick curtain. I just got this at a, uh, um, at like a Goodwill or something. It was pretty cheap. And yeah, that'll shut out any light. It'll just give a little bit of privacy and if I want it to be dark in here, it darkens it up. Keeps light coming from coming through. But I usually keep that open most of the time. It's usually only, only shut that at night. Okay, cool. So yeah, I, this is my, you can't tell from this side, but this is actually my toilet stall. And then, you know, living in a bus, everything has to be multi-functional so instead of just being a toilet stall I also I secured a beam kind of on this side and then I use this as a coat and bag rack so I've got that secured on and then I you know have decoration that's Bob Marley but yeah I built this little stall it's just really thin I don't know maybe it half inch wood because it's just privacy it's not for durability I just built something to go in front of the toilet and then I just have this little sheet I might do something with this later but then inside here I have the nature's head toilet in here which has been great. I really appreciate it. I really like it. I, I think it was worth every penny. It has, you know, the, the solids and the liquids are separate. I really did not like the idea of doing, of dealing with raw sewage. Yeah, I, I still even think about it makes me want to throw up. So this is a little bit better. It's a little bit easier. Obviously, you know, dealing with waste is going to be gross no matter what, but I feel like it's, it's pretty easy here. It's really easy to clean. I can clean this toilet up, you know, in 10 minutes. I can empty it, I can empty it in five minutes, I can clean it up, I can do the whole deal in 10 minutes. So I'm happy with the toilet for sure. So my ceiling is done very amateurly, but it, it works. I mean, it goes, I think it, it brings everything together. I didn't know exactly how I was gonna get the wood to curve, so I just use a kind of a thin, maybe a quarter of an inch wood. It's not, it's not very strong, but I mean, you're not gonna really be doing anything because it's on the ceiling. I have it secured into the metal frame. I have some uh, of those self-tapping screws. I have a uh, quarter inch layer of styrofoam insulation, but I have 
s glued to the actual ceiling of the bus. Um, and then I have, over that quarter inch styrofoam insulation, I have the, the cotton candy, whatever that insulation's called, and then the wood. It's hard to say how well it works because I don't really have anything to compare it to, but you know, it, it stays fine. Um, it gets cold, when it's cold outside, it's cold in here, but I have a little buddy heater, and it heats up the bus in like 20 to 30 minutes, I feel like, and it does a really good job. I, I usually start it out on high, um, heats up the bus pretty quick and then I'll turn it down to low to maintain the heat to preserve my propane. Yeah, it's great. I haven't dealt with, I mean the coldest temperature it's been probably 30 degrees I've dealt with. So not really cold temperatures yet. Connected to my ceiling, I decided, I was trying to decide what to do for, because I, I always, I love movies. I'm a big movie buff so any place I live, if I lived in a cardboard box I would have a projector in there. That's a thing of mine. So I have a PlayStation 4 here and my projector and it's kind of rigged up. It's kind of silly but I just have it all just like tied down to keep it secure and I have it connected to the ceiling and then these are connected into the framework of the bus. So these aren't going anywhere and then these hooks. Um, it's pretty cool because eventually at some point, so I have my projector screen over here. This can actually come all the way off and at some point I want to get another screen or maybe a sheet or something that I can put outside and when it's really nice, on a nice night, I can take the whole setup and then move it outside and watch movies outside the bus as well. So there's that. I have a little speaker hooked up and then I have all my wires running from this stuff and there's a, a plug back here which probably later today I'm going to secure. I have plugs. I have four outlets in the bus. Um, and then and then a lot of the outlets I plug in the power strip so I have even more. I'm probably going to be securing this down here today. I'm going to strap this down so I'll have easy access to that. And I'll have these. I ran these behind my wood panel here. And I'm going to secure these here to kind of just keep them out of the way and kind of out of sight, out of mind. So my power system, I have four 100 watt solar panels on my roof. And then I have, so those are in the back. They run down through, I don't know if you want to walk back there now. My solar panels are over here in the back and there's just a cord that comes through and so they're all connected. I have six six volt batteries and they do pretty well. So the four 400 watts of solar electricity and then the six six volt batteries. I went a little bit lower end. I went bargain on the batteries. It's hard for me to say if that was good or not because I don't have anything to compare it to. So I've done pretty well. I thought I was going to be able to run my fridge. I was able to run it, but then my electricity would die every night. So since I've unplugged my fridge, I've had um, plenty of electricity. It's been pretty good. Um, I haven't really had it go out. There's certain small appliances I can't use. Water boiler is ridiculous for some reason. Electric electric kettle is an insane amount of, it, it just, it, so it burns through my electricity almost immediately. I was using a vacuum cleaner in here earlier today though. No issues. Um, I always have different things charging, my speakers, laptop, phone charging. I got a fan on right now. It's been no problems. Um, it's cool. I have the little, the little inverters back there so you can see, I can see where my electricity is and see how much is being used. So that's good. So the piece for, like for my kitchen, I was trying to figure out what to do for a counter. I went really, really low budget. I did everything myself and then I didn't have a lot of money to spend and I was in a hurry. So a lot of things were just kind of, I don't know. So this is just a piece of, this is just an inch and a half, kind of, uh, I forget if it's oak or pine, and then I just kind of, I stained it to make this countertop, and then went over it with a certain type of finish to make it just kind of water resistant. And that's what we did for that. I got this sink used at an RV salvage yard in here in Phoenix. Um, I think the sink and then the, and the head together were like 20 bucks. So I have this running off of, I think, AC power or DC, I forget which one is which, but flip the switch here and this runs back to my inverter back there and then, and then it turns the water pump on and that goes, I have my water just drain into a five gallon bucket down here. It's just super basic. I didn't want to deal with plumbing. Again, I'm just not very patient. I get excited. And I got. I, I wanted to be out on the road. I wanted to just do things. I didn't have the patience to do everything the, like, properly. But this works. It works for me. It works for. It, it meets my needs. The water drains in this bucket, and it. I'm very sparing with my water. I only have a 42 gallon water tank, 
The water tank's here, and this is the only plumbing I have, is running from this water tank, which is under here, and coming to this sink. It doesn't, it doesn't go underneath the bus, nothing else, it just drains into this. Obviously there's no water with the uh, toilet because it's a composting toilet, it's all dry. So yeah, it just drains into here and every so often I just go dump this bucket out. It's mostly just water, it's not anything bad or smelly or dangerous, so I just dump it in the bushes or whatever. So I cook, I would like to maybe do something like to, to cook in here, it would be nice if I could do something to cook inside the bus for when it's cold or rainy or windy. But at the moment, I just go camp style. Under here, I just keep this little propane, you know, one of these little basic, I don't know, this was like, I think it was like 40 bucks. Camping grill. It's quick to set this up. I use this. I have, you know, I have stuff in here, that, like the propane hooks up here. This goes on. I wouldn't set it up in here, but what I do is I have this table that I keep right here, easy access. And I'll set this up outside to cook a quick meal. It can stand up a little higher. It's got the uh, the heat safe area here, so I'll put the I'll set the grill up on this, and then I'll have my whatever I'm cooking. Well, I'll, I'll set set it up over here. And I can whip up a meal really quick in this. You know, like I have like pots, pans, and stuff. Uh, I have silverware. I have dishes. So, you know, cook my meal outside and then just boom, it's obviously a fold up table. It's easy, I fold it back up, put it back in here. I can usually, I can cut and prep everything inside in the bus and then go out, I can cook outside in usually like 10 minutes, 15 minutes and then just bring it all back in. It's not that I prefer to cook outside. I mean, I mean, if it's nice outside, I do like being outside, but I read into it about how safe is it to use a propane you know, outdoor grill in, inside, and it just seemed like it's kind of rolling, the taking an unnecessary risk. Rolling the dice on my safety and well-being. <laughs> so, I've done it, God, I mean, I've done it before. I've been desperate, I was hungry, and it was really windy, and I couldn't get this fire to stay, so I've done it. But I, you know, I could feel a little bit lightheaded. I also have, I haven't really used this. We did this inside, I was at a music festival not too long ago. And I have one of those little, those little small camping fold-out that thing. Oh, here it is. So we use this inside at this little camping thing. You put in you, you know, one of those deals you screw those little propane tanks on here and this just opens up, makes a small flame. And you just set that up. We use this to boil water. And you could like, I could heat up soup in this thing. And this is probably what I'll be if I ever am in a situation where I'm too windy. I don't know how safe this is to use indoor, but I just feel a little bit better about it for some reason. I feel like it's letting off less propane. So this I would use, and this I'll, this I'll use to, if I'm gonna make coffee in the morning and stuff and it's cold outside or windy, I'll use this to heat up my water. I wanted a queen size bed. For my bus, I know a lot of people, it's just gonna be them or them and one other person. I wanted this to be kind of a social deal. I wanted to be able to take camping trips with my friends. I wanna travel around, have maybe people travel with me. I wanna be able to have as many as five people be like very comfortable on this bus. You know, so that means room for their storage and obviously room to sleep. So I did queen size, queen size bunk beds, and it's it's worked out really well. I've had as many as three people on the bottom, two people very comfortable. I mean, you could have two people on the bottom or top that don't even touch each other at all. You know, you have a, a complete a bunch of space in between. So that's been good. And then just blankets. Um, this is kind of the the logo for my bus. I got this little blanket as a birthday present for my my brother. It wasn't a birthday present, I'm sorry, it was a Christmas present just uh, a couple months ago from my brother and his wife, so I was really touched by that. That was really cool. And then also with my bed, so I just built this bed, I just looked online for kind of instructions and I, it's very sturdy. Um, normally I have it secured to the wall, but I took it off because I'm going to be um, installing blinds right there over the next couple of days, so I have it separated from the wall. But then underneath, so I put a hinge on the bottom bunk so I could do storage under here. There's a couple things like this Keurig, for example, there's a couple things that if I'm in a place where I can plug into electricity that I have, I have a, an electric kettle, which is the worst thing for electricity, probably in the, I don't know, it's the worst thing for electricity. But there's certain luxuries if I'm at a friend's house and I'm parked outside and they let me, I can just take, I can unplug from my solar power and I can just run a power cord into somebody's house and use their electricity. Cool. And so in that case, I can use 
the heater, I can use the water boiler, I can do things that I normally wouldn't do. My closet, I just chained this the other day because I had a problem. So there's some things I feel like I didn't realize until out on the road. You know, there's certain things that you, like, oh, cool, that's probably secure enough until you go over a bump and it, everything falls off, you know, or everything falls out. So I recently just chained this up. Because the, what would happen is during while I was driving, the clothes would shift. I had this full of clothes before, and I'll, and I'll stock it back up once I... But I haven't been staying here for, for the last few days, or for the last few uh, months. The clothes would all shift to one side, and then the, the whole rack would fall, and then all my clothes would fall. And this happened, like, once a week. <laughs> so what I've done now is I've chained this to the ceiling, and this is going into the metal framework of the bus, so that's not go anywhere that's super secure and even if this comes lodged off of this thing it's still not going to fall it might shake around a little bit but it's still held up and I can put my shoes and stuff up here so this is a uh, this is plenty of, of space like hanger space on this thing and then in front of the bed I just I put I had a tapestry this provides a little bit of privacy if we have multiple people on the bus I guess that a little bit of privacy is better than nothing it's kind of a it's kind of a nice effect and I have this ohm upside down because I had it the other way and then it got all it started tearing a lot because people keep you know whatever so I switched it just for the sake of it is upside down for anybody, I don't want people watch this and criticize me. Like, he doesn't know what the ohm symbol looks. I know it's upside down. I'm sorry. This is probably, this is one of my proudest accomplishments in this bus is this couch area. I did build all this. Uh, I just kind of had the idea come to me. Um, I need to tighten up a little bit, but I just kind of re redid this upholstery. But I built these, I did these uh, cushions. I have foam in here that was repurposed from an old couch that was in an RV. Again, the same RV salvage yard. I bought that chair in and bought the sink in. I bought an old couch and took the cushions out, cut them, um, and took the foam, and then I reupholstered it with my own material. Um, so this is these are all like just pretty much wooden storage boxes that just have cushions on top. This is a nice little couch area. Everything you know. And this is a coffee table. And the cool thing is, it's this is pretty quick to do. Take the top of this table off. Grab this cushion here. That slides over there. This one slides over here. And you got a full size bed, just like that. YouTube videos, a, a lot of trial and error, and heartache and disappointment to get to this. <laughs> So a lot of a lot of trial and error. A lot of times, like a lot of times, you do things and you're like, "Wow, that's terrible. It didn't work out how I wanted it to at all." Um, so that's fine. You know, there's. I feel like anytime I went to build something that I was super confident about, it for sure didn't work. Anytime I was like, "Oh yeah, this is gonna be so easy. I'm gonna have. I'm gonna be free by dinner time." It took me three days. <laughs> so I guess it was a very humbling experience because I'd watch a video and be like, "Oh, that's easy. I can do that. I'm a smart guy." and then it wasn't easy and sometimes I'm not a smart guy as smart as I think I am so it was it was humbling everything that I went through and look at something and be like oh my god that was so hard that was so much work that was such a pain to do but now it's there and it's now it's done and it's it feels good if you're interested in me at all and you're interested in my bus and my journey the links to my social media are gonna be right below so come check it out I'll look forward to seeing you